Good afternoon, everyone. Just doing a quick audio check. If anybody can say yes, they can hear me. Yes, they can hear you. Perfect. Thanks, Troy. I appreciate that. We'll get started in just a moment. All right, so hopefully now you can hear me and see me. That would be perfect. Did it work that way, Troy? It did work that way. Excellent, great. We'll go ahead and get started. So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining and welcome to our second edition of How to Do Business With. Uh, today, we're gonna focus on how to do business with Eastern Arizona College. We have an all-star lineup prepared for you. Uh, first, I would also like to thank our community partners on bringing this whole program to fruition. Sean Wenham with Freeport. Sean is the Community Development Manager and Vance Bryce. Vance is the ex Executive Director for the Graham County Chamber of Commerce. Uh, how to do business came to fruition by some past conversation and us putting our heads together, and here we are. Today, we're going to hear from yours truly, uh, me, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the SBDC, the Small Business Development Center at Eastern Arizona College. Then I will hand it off to Troy Ainsworth. Troy is the Director of Fiscal Control, the controller at Eastern Arizona College, and do some follow-up with Jeremy Hughes. Jeremy is the Director of Maintenance at Eastern Arizona College. Lastly, we'll turn the time to Vance Bryce, again, the Executive Director of the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and then we will open it up for some Q&A. So I would ask for you, if you're not speaking as one of the, the presenters that I just mentioned, please remain on mute. Uh, if not, we do have some folks that'll put you on mute. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. We will try to get to them during Q&A. If not, we'll open it up for Q&A uh, for you to ask those questions. And then lastly, this is being recorded. Uh, we will be sharing this with all of you that are out there today, as well as our email list. So if you would like to stay uh, off camera, feel free to keep your camera off. But if you come off camera, just know you may be part of the recording. All right, with that said, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, again, here's our all-star lineup that I talked about. I'm going to kick this off today. My name's Eric Bejarano, and I'm going to talk just briefly about the Small Business Development Center at Eastern Arizona College. Uh, I'd like to introduce our team. Of course, we can't do this with everyone uh, in my tiny little office, but here's a picture of our amazing team. So I am surrounded by them. As you can see in the picture, I'll start with uh, the person immediately to my right, which is Tavia Rayleigh. Tavia is our amazing program assistant. Uh, moving on to her right is Sarah Alexander. Sarah is our business analyst in Globe. And then immediately to my left in the picture is... Uh, Simone Casio. Simone is our business analyst up in Payson. And then off to her left is Tori Cranford. Tori is our business analyst covering not only Graham, but also Greenlee County. So we are a very unique SBDC in the state. And I'll talk about the uh, footprint of the Small Business Development Center locally and nationally in just a moment. But we cover out of Eastern Arizona College, Graham, Greenlee, and Gila County. So how do we do that? Uh, we are actually grant funded by the Small Business Administration. They filter grant funding to the, the state office, which is located up in Maricopa Community College, which is then filtered down to Eastern Arizona College. So EAC also provides a cash match portion of that and also provides our office space on campus. The neat thing about the SBDC or the Small Business Development Center is we provide no cost counseling. So I'm going to say it again. It's no cost or free counseling uh, to current businesses and those starting up. So if you have any questions that we can help answer uh, with your business to help support you or assist you with your business or business startup, we do that all totally free of charge. We do offer a lot of no cost or low cost classes and seminars. For instance, this seminar right now is completely free. It just takes your time. Uh, we also offer a couple other things like QuickBooks. Right now we have a Dream Builder program going on a co-starters program we hope to launch soon, and some other training as well as seminars that we do. Uh, just a handful of those have registration fees. Typically, the reason for that is one for QuickBooks, we charge $149, which you're getting well over a $500 value. 
In addition to the three nights of training, you also get some one-on-one -on -one time with the instructor to help you through QuickBooks should you have questions later on in time. And of course, that comes with an expense. And then co-starters and Dream Builder, we do uh, charge a $50 registration fee, but that is a 10-week program. And that fee helps offset food, snacks, and then also uh, the exciting event that comes at the end of that when we do a graduation, lunch, or dinner. Uh, lastly, you can see that our mission is to help new entrepreneurs realize the dream of business ownership and assist existing businesses to remain competitive in an ever-changing global economy, as well as support new startups. With that said, I can't leave out our other partner that helps provide fundings for the small business development centers in the state of Arizona. That is the Arizona Commerce Authority. Again, that is funding that comes our way to help us do what we do to support you. And you can see that they are the state's leading economic development organization uh, in, in Arizona. So shout out to the ACA. Uh, talk about our network briefly. So we are a small office actually in, in, in eastern or southeastern Arizona. And you could see our team, but we do have a big footprint in the state. So across the state, you can see there's 26 satellite offices. SBDCs are primarily located at um, community colleges. So for instance, Northland Pioneer up north, Central Arizona, Arizona Western, uh, Cochise Community, et cetera. But we do have satellite locations. Like I mentioned, we have a satellite office in Globe. We have a satellite office in Payson as well. And then we also work with our Arizona PTAC folks, which their name is actually changing right now to APEX, A-P-E-X, and they help with working with government entities and procurement. So we have a lot of resources that we can offer. You can see on the next slide that nationally, we have over 1,100 centers in the Small Business Development Center Network, uh, over 4,000 counselors, and then you can see uh, on average we serve uh, over 750,000 clients a year. So while we might have a small office in Eastern Arizona College, we do have a large national footprint. If you have a question that comes up and we don't know the answer for, you can see by looking at all those little stars on the map, we have business analysts across the nation that can probably help us find the right answer for your question. The next slide I'm going to cover is just some of the services and resources we have. And instead of just going over the whole thing, I'll, I'll just pause for a moment and let you take a look at that. And I'm not a radio guy, but I know that dead air time is not good air time. But with that said, you can see that we can help you with everything from business startup, uh, accounting, record keeping, marketing, technology issues, social media training, uh, HR concerns or discussions, and then lastly, some of the trainings that we are doing. Uh, as mentioned, Dream Builder, right now we are offering cohorts not only in Graham County, but Greenlee County, uh, and we just completed our QuickBooks sessions in uh, Graham and Gila County uh, not too long ago. I'm going to start to wrap up now, and I I wanted to put this in here just to draw attention to one thing that's important to me, not that I can highlight my family uh, or that I can show pirates because who doesn't like a good pirate picture? Uh, and just so you all know, their favorite letter of the alphabet is not R, it's actually C because pirates love the C. But anyhow, this was a picture on a recent trip we took and I, I had to take a picture of it. But I put in here to, to kind of talk about what is your why, because this is certainly something that we would discuss if you come into our office and sit down with us. Uh, about seven or eight years ago, I read the book by Som Simon Sinek, and I believe the title is Start With Why. And the interesting thing is we had this conversation at our team meeting earlier this month, and then we went to a meeting up, uh, up in Payson, and the same exact topic came up. And this is very important to our small business startups because what is your why? And the reason why I put in there, as you can see from the picture uh, on the far left of my family, that my why obviously changed through the years and your why is ever changing. But uh, the, the neat thing is to figure out what your why is as a small business developer, as a, as a young entrepreneur getting into the field and see how we can best support you. So if you do come in, we'll be happy to talk to you about your why. And then lastly, I'm going to play a quick video, and then you will be done listening to me for a little bit, and I will turn it over to Troy. So let's make sure this works. Making the jump from high school to university can be overwhelming. 
That's why Eastern Arizona College is a great place to start. EA offers personalized education at a quarter of the cost. Small classes with hands-on experience, surrounded by people who genuinely care. Plus, there's always something fun to do on and off campus. Whether you're planning to transfer to a university or learn a new trade, Eastern Arizona College is the place for you. It's changed my life. Let it change yours. I suggested to Eric that we actually charge a fee for everybody to, to hear from the finance group. I mean, this is this is high quality information that you're going to be receiving. Like, I, know, I, I don't want to uh, bore anybody with uh, debits and credits, so we're not talking debits and credits at all today. Uh, something that we thought would be important is uh, to help the small business uh, owners in the area to understand the, the what, the how, and the who uh, as it relates to uh, engaging and, and work with EA and, and partnering with us uh, here on campus and letting you know who you should be working with, what opportunities there are, and then uh, how you can go about that um, to, to get your foot in the door if you haven't already. So on the next uh, slide, we'll have, Eric, can you advance? All right, here we go. So Here's the what, uh, and, and Eric, keep hitting the button and, and we'll see the, the wave occur on each one of the items, but this is just a, a, a slight list of some of the opportunities that we, we go out for contract here on campus. So exterminating, uh, it's a large campus, uh, we don't have an in-house solution. Uh, landscaping, we do some in-house solution, but not all. Photography, choreography, clinician, which is kind of an odd word, uh, and it, it usually has a connotation of a very medical, uh, but not always. Our fine arts group uh, brings in uh, experts in the fine arts field, and they serve as clinicians, and, and they teach uh, the students here in, in large groups. Uh, general contract services, uh, if you're engaged in any form of construction, uh, we typically have a large number of projects going on uh, at the campus. If, it, if it's not a large number of projects, it's large project. <laughs> And, and Jeremy um, really heads that up and he's got a great group, uh, but we certainly are unable to satisfy all of the requirements uh, ourselves in-house. And so quite often we go out to bid for, for special projects. And then another one here is uh, custodial. Uh, certainly we have a great custodial staff uh, here on campus, but there are times throughout the year where we have large group events um, and the, the turnaround time is such that we need assistance in getting our facilities uh, in order again for another group uh, of uh, individuals to come in. So, um, you know, running and operating at ENC, it's like a little tiny city. Uh, we've got a food services department, we have a uh, bookstore, we've got student services. And so we have all of these activities going on uh, that certainly in an ideal world, we could handle everything in house, but we also know that is not our core competency. And we are not afraid to outsource those items that uh, we can get experts in uh, on campus. So keep these things in mind. Uh, obviously, if you're on the call and, and uh, you have um, uh, relationships with uh, companies that offer these services, let them know. We're, we're here to accept. So that's some of the what, certainly not all of it. So if you'll go to the next slide, we'll talk about the how. And uh, if you'll click one time, Eric, it'll highlight this first one. So make the right contact. So Good on you for being in this meeting. This is the people on the phone are the right contacts. Uh, Eric is a, a great representative for EA. He's got a lot of contacts with the small businesses. And uh, that is a great way to get your foot in the door. If you know Jeremy Hughes, uh, Jeremy has a great need for a, a lot of uh, support. He's also very fluent and very familiar with all of the projects going here on campus and, and those needs. So those are two great contact, contacts um, and then secondly, the, the fiscal office. So uh, we've really tried to streamline our processes in-house. And a big part of that is ensuring that all contracts and engagement of services flow through the fiscal office. So if you'll hit the enter button one more time, Eric, um, this is where we come to submit the appropriate paperwork. As much as we would all like to just show up on campus or anywhere and start working and getting paid for it, um, it just can't work that way. So we, we've got our processes and our paperwork that need to be filled out in order for you to engage in activity on the campus. Um, th here's a couple of things to know. <clears throat> the one contract would be what we call a personal service agreement. So this is for any individual who would come on campus and perform work for EA 
that does not have an employer identification number. So if you're self-employed uh, or maybe you're doing a one-off uh, piece of work for us and you don't own your own company, we would want you to fill out this personal service agreement um, that allows EA to explain to you or whoever else might be working for us uh, the expectation. And it also gives you that promise of, of payment uh, from us when the job is done. And then secondly, under this appropriate paperwork, uh, we would need to have a contract. So if you have an EIN number and you are established as a separate entity or your business is a separate entity, we would want you to fill out what we call here a contract summary form. And that contract summary form lists out the uh, request of service basically from EA and, and then the service that your company can provide and the expectation and the cost and the benefit associated with that contract. So that contract gets viewed by a handful of people, usually the requester, whoever is asking uh, EA to engage in the agreement. Um, our contracts group reviews it. And then we typically send it uh, for our chief business officer for review and signature. And something really to keep in mind, and not everybody here at EA um, necessarily understands this, but there's only two or maybe three people here on campus that actually have signing authority, which means they can actually engage in a contract for service. Um, I don't have that authority. Uh, Jeremy does in some instances, but typically we're talking about our CBO when we get into a contract with some significant dollars, which we'll touch on here in just a moment. So um, unfortunately, we've all run into cases where we know somebody and they say, hey, come do this for us. And it gets done. And then I get an invoice on my desk and I think, well, I, this was never approved. <laughs> you know, no, the right person didn't sign it. So please, please, please make that right contact uh, and then work towards getting the right paperwork. And when it comes to the paperwork, reach out um, to the uh, or the contracts department, and we'll touch on that in just a moment. And uh, there is a note uh, for EAC. We do prefer uh, to engage uh, with companies who have an EIN um, as opposed to a sole proprietor, and a lot of that is just for uh, IRS compliance. All right, uh, hit enter one more time, and we'll talk about certainly follow the procurement contract guidelines. This is just for everybody. This is our uh, procurement uh, policy. Um, we have to go out for get two written quotes for any service or um, purchase that's going to be ten thousand dollars or greater. Uh, any service or purchase that's going to be twenty five thousand dollars or greater, we have a minimum uh, three quotes. And if you have fifty thousand dollars or more and a single engagement, then we actually have to go to our uh, president here on campus and make sure that he's okay with it before we can engage in the activity. And, and the reason I bring those uh, two items up is, um, you know, as a government institution, we have to be equitable and we have to be transparent. And so uh, I certainly like to share that information with everybody. All right, so we've talked about the what, the how, now let's talk about the who. All right, not the, not the group, the who, for any of those who might know who that is. Um, but here, you know, the who, if you'll hit enter, uh, Eric, one more time, you've got your initial contact. So uh, your initial contact, whomever that might be here on campus, is your foot in the door. Um, because you can reach out to them and ask them who you can contact, or you can ask them what my extension is, or Jeremy's, or Eric's, and they can get you to the right person. So that's important, and I wanted to make sure that any contact here at East EAC is going to be a good contact. It'll get you to the right person eventually. Uh, the, second right, the second item here is the right contacts. So as I mentioned before, you have to have the right paperwork uh, in hand uh, and all signed. And these are the people who can help you with that. So it's our purchasing group. And Nathan Smith is our assistant, associate director of budgets, contracts, and grants. And there's the email address. If you have a question, shoot him an email. He's more than happy to help. Gerald Schmidt is our purchasing manager. That's his email address. Gerald is also very involved with the contract process. Typically what happens is that uh, we get a request and then especially with projects where Jeremy is gonna be involved, Nathan and Gerald reach out to Jeremy and, and they discuss it. Uh, number two here is maintenance in many cases because uh, Jeremy is not all things maintenance but all things grounds related. And so there's a lot of activity. If you uh, ever wanna reach out to Jeremy, he certainly has a lot of influence on who we are able to use and who uh, we aren't able to use. 
and uh, his email address is, is right there as well. Notice my email address is not there. <laughs> it's, uh, it is intentional because really the purchasing and the contract process goes through, uh, it starts with Nathan and Gerald. So I, I certainly want to speed the process along for you. And then finally, um, right, not, not to be negative, but no contract or PO. What that means for me as the controller is I don't have authority to pay you. <laughs> and, and I don't want to not pay you. So this goes back to having the right paperwork and following those processes. Um, the, the contract uh, and a purchase order means that the institution has authorized the work and they've authorized me to sign the check to issue payment to you. So I uh, certainly want you to get paid. And that's why we wanted to take just a few minutes and give you a little bit of uh, the what, the why, not the why, and I can't even remember. The what, the something, and the who. And that's it for me. The how. It was the how. <laughs> it's the how. And I was confusing myself. And then this was a quote that I really enjoyed, that today's business must have the right people in the right jobs at the right times. And again, this is uh, really why EA likes to go out and uh, recruit uh, outside help. Because again, we know what we do best. And uh, a lot of things that we need done, we don't do best, but we've got a community full of people who can do them. Perfect. Troy, thank you so much. We appreciate you and your time and your information. Uh, with that said, we'll turn it over to Jeremy, the Director of Maintenance, to see if he has anything to add. Jeremy. Well, down at maintenance, we don't spend our time making fancy slides like Troy does up in the fiscal office. So I, I don't have anything to share with the group that, uh, you know, is going to dazzle anybody, but you know, we are we're kind of the where the rubber hits the road on um, projects. You know, we out of our department, we do have you know a pretty large budget for maintaining facilities and stuff. So, um, I'll I'll just speak to a few of the things that um, that I kind of oversee as far as some of these bigger projects. I, I don't know if, you know, this group that we have here today is going to have a, a huge benefit from this, but at least they can understand, like, what these processes are. So, like Troy was saying, you know, with a, a government institution like we are, we're government funded, we have certain procurement um, policies and guidelines that we have to follow. And in some of those that we've, we've been using more regular, you know, as of lately is they're, they're, one of them is called a one GPA, which is a, a state, um, basically a procurement vehicle. And so what it is, is it's a list of contractors or vendors that are approved. And it saves us from having to go out and competitively bid all of these different one-offs for maybe it's our custodial supplies or uh, maybe it's a construction project. Um, but there's a, a list of those, and, and I can just rattle off a few of them. One is that we use the most, it's probably one GPA. Um, second behind it is, it's called Mojave. Um, there's also another local one, and it's, it's an acronym, it, it's SAVE. Um, I can't remember what that acronym stands for. I don't know if you do, Troy, but, um, and not only EAC, but I, I would say a little, you know, a broader brush is, is most of your local, um, you know, state funded institutions. So like your, your local school districts, they, they're gonna be very similar to us. And so if, if there are people that are wanting to work with, you know, school districts and EAC, there are these programs that you can pursue and go after. You can, you know, try to become a member of it. Um, it is a bit of a process to do, but, if, if that's the lane that you're wanting to be in, you know, these could be some, some really worthwhile things pursuing and, and becoming a member of. Um, so like I was saying, like our, our projects as of recently, we've, we've used, um, the most recent one was a renovation we did on a Wesley Taylor dorm. And it was, a, it's called a job order contract. And we really didn't have the luxury of, of time on this project. It was turned over to us, I think, in February and said, 
we need to have this dorm renovated by uh, it was like the first of June for summer camps. So that didn't give us an opportunity to bring an architect in and come up with a design um, and then put it out to bid and secure bids. So we went with one of these uh, procurement vehicles called job order contract. And we're able to bring a contractor in again that was pre-approved to, to work um, under this contract and we can immediately bring them out and start working with them. Um, so those are, those are just some of the things that we deal with on the facility side. Um, our bigger, our bigger um, consumables like custodial supplies, things like that. Again, we work through um, one of these procurement uh, vehicles on the, with that one, we're working through Mojave on it. But we're not exclusive to those. So um, we, we love supporting the local economy where we can and, and doing business with, with local people. Um, I was talking to Troy just a little bit in a chat, but coming up um, this summer, we've got a couple of projects coming up that are gonna be uh, construction remodels. So what we'll do there is EAC will issue um, an RFP. Troy, nod your head, does that sound correct? Okay. So we'll issue what is a, an RFP or request for proposal. We'll, we'll come up with a predefined scope of work of what these projects are. Um, we'll blast it out through some advertising, probably through some you know, local publications, media. Um, and we will request contractors to come in and to bid on these projects. We'll give them an opportunity to walk these jobs with us to see you know, what the scope of this is and. Um, try to help them understand it the best we can and then receive their proposals and you know we'll reward or, or award that contract to you know the best fit and you know it, it helps us be fiscally responsible that way with um, you know securing the 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 multiple bids on it and it's you know it's just good practice we're we're uh, funded in a in a large part by taxes and we we really strive to be fiscally responsible with you know the stakeholders money we it, it's something that we we just strive to do even when it comes down to some smaller purchases it just just something we try to uh be smart with um in a nutshell that's it i, I don't know if anyone has any you know questions for us if, if there's anyone that is interested in trying to, you know, the, the lane that I'm in to, to work with EAC, I'd be happy to visit with you, um, you know, present what opportunities might be coming up in the near future. We're in a, a unique market. Um, you know, it used to be we would, we would advertise things and we would get lots of bids and interest and that, uh, that doesn't seem to be the case as much. And so it's, you know, we're, we're excited to, to talk to multiple people um, and, you know, try to get, like I say, competitive bids going on these projects. Perfect. Right, that, yeah. yeah, that's all I've got, Eric, unless, like I say, unless someone's got some questions about this. That is great, Jeremy. Appreciate the information. And if we can just hold on questions for just a couple minutes, I'm going to turn it over to Vance Bryce, the Executive Director of the Chamber of Commerce, and then we'll open it up to a Q&A session. All right. Thank you, Eric. I'm just in the room next door, so if you hear some reverb, um, that's why. I think I have the video on, but um, I'll just go with audio. So, um, I'm Vance Bryce, I'm the Executive Director of the Grand County Chamber of Commerce, and I just, first of all, thank you for everyone who participated in this. Thanks, Eric, for hosting us and for um, the EAC employees who took the time out of the day to do this. Um, we are the membership organization. We, have, we are at around 400 members, and we are your champion here locally to get these contracts, to level up your business, to qualify for these contracts. If you're not there yet, let's get you there. Let's get you in the Small Business Development Center to figure out how to get, if you need EIN, let's get you that. If you need um, 
help in pricing items and budgeting things, the, the Small Business Development Center can help with that. And uh, here at the Chamber, we our mission is to advance the quality of life for everyone in the Kilo Valley. And that includes our small business owners, their customers, um, their employees, everyone involved with that whole process. EAC is an amazing customer to have, an amazing person to be in a contract with, because as you heard, they use best practices, which means if you go through the right process, you're going to get paid. It's one of these customers that's not going to stick with you. <laughs> so that's good. Um, and here at the Chamber as members, we have a once a month meeting. It's, we're starting it on Thursday, this Thursday at uh, Powerhouse 87, which is right next to Joby's. They're a metal fabricator. This is a small business that put a bid in with the town of Thatcher and did their miles, miles signs on their multi-use path. So they figured out um, a customer, one local customer they could have was the town of Thatcher. And so your business may have some service or product that one of the local governments or school districts or the college um, could benefit from. And so we're your champion. Um, come see us at the chamber. We'd love to talk about membership, about giving back to the community, about serving the community, and about leveling up your business so that we can be competitive with these contracts. And thanks again to everyone who participated. Appreciate being here. Vance, thank you so much. We appreciate you and your input. And again, your partnership along with you and Sean on putting this program together. With that said, we'll pause. We still have Jeremy and Troy on the line. We have Vance here as well. I'm available if you have any questions. Uh, for those that are that are out there, if you have any questions, feel free to come off of mute and ask them, drop them in the chat box. We'll just give it a moment or two. And if there are none, then we will wrap up the webinar. I must say the information was great, but the humor was outstanding for these last 30 minutes. All right, last call, last call for any questions that you might have of the panel. Okay, with that said, I'll move on to contact information. So there you have my information, Troy, Jeremy, and Vance's. Again, uh, Troy did mention uh, the other gentlemen, uh, Gerald and Nathan, to contact as well. That information will be in the recorded uh, Zoom link that we send out after we put this together. So expect that in your inbox in probably a couple of days. We will share that with our email list as well. Uh, not seeing any questions, I'd like to thank Troy, Jeremy, and Vance for their time. I'd like to thank all of you for joining the second edition of How to Do Business with Eastern Arizona College. And we look forward to seeing you on our next session, which is planned for uh, the, let's see, we're in Mar March already. So sometime in April, we'll be blasting that out. March begins tomorrow. So welcome March. We'll have our next series in April. Uh, with that said, I hope you all have a great day and thank you for joining. Be safe out there. Bye now.